Guys, this one's on its way to being a cult classic. We're talking Longmire, next. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Rewind, Relive, and Review. I'm Rick. This is the show where I talk about movies, music, and television. Today, I'm talking about a TV show that I really, really love. It's Longmire. And a lot of you that know, know. A lot of you that don't, take a listen. Okay, so Longmire is an American neo-Western crime drama. It's a television series that premiered back in June of 2012 on A&E Network. And it was developed by John Convey and Hunt Baldwin. Now the series is based on the Walt Longmire mystery series. It's a series of novels by Craig Johnson. Just like most things Hollywood, the novels and the series you're gonna find differs quite a bit. More on that later. It centers around Walt Longmire, the sheriff in Wyoming. He's assisted by staff, friends, and his daughter in investigating major crimes within his jurisdiction. Longmire became the highest rated original drama series on A&E. Uh, however, the network did what networks usually do. And in August of 2014, they said that they would not renew the series after the third season. Warner Horizon did offer it to other networks and Netflix ended up picking it up and they did the final three seasons, four through six. All episodes are available for streaming on Netflix and they are available on DVD. Delving a little bit deeper into it, Walt Longmire, who's played by Robert Taylor, is the sheriff of fictional Absaroka County in Wyoming. His best friend, Henry Standing Bear, played by Lou Diamond Phillips, provides insight to and sometimes aids in dealing with tribal police. The reservation has its own police force which has authority within reservation borders, except for capital crimes. So this series stars Robert Taylor, Katie Sackhoff, Lou Diamond Phillips, Adam Bartley, Cassidy Friedman, and Bailey Chase. It was shot in New Mexico, and the runtime for each episode varies between 42 and 71 minutes. In addition to the running episode of the week scenarios that most shows have, there's also underlying season long plots that you'll see in a lot of today's TV shows to help the viewer uh, stay tuned and stay with the series. And that's one of the things that I liked about this show. Now, in case you haven't seen it already without giving too much of it away, one of the things that I really like about a lot of shows is nobody is untouchable. Someone that you believe can be a star on the show, someone who will last for a long time, can and possibly will meet their demise before you know it. I like that because it, it, it grounds these things in a more realistic way. Now, as far as the cast, Robert Taylor plays Walt Longmire. He's the uh, sheriff in Absaroka County. Uh, his character is a throwback to the iconic heroes of classic westerns. And um, as these stories build, Walt is shown to have a knack for finding the truth behind the various crimes that have been committed. He is a widower. His wife died a year before the series started and he has told his daughter and friends that she died of cancer. However, for those of us who've watched, know that there's a little bit more to this, or a lot, I should say. Katie Sackhoff plays Victoria Moretti, and Vic is the sheriff's deputy, and she's former police department homicide investigator in Philadelphia. She moved to Wyoming with her husband, Sean, following an incident with her superior officer in Philadelphia. Lou Diamond Phillips plays Henry Standing Bear, a Cheyenne who is Walt's best friend and closest confidant. Their friendship began when they met in sixth grade. Henry owns and operates the Red Pony, which is a local tavern and restaurant. 
He's an expert tracker. His name is described as meaning a bear who protects those he loves. Bailey Chase plays Branch Connolly, an ambitious deputy who comes from a wealthy local family. Cassidy Freeman plays Katie Longmire, Walt's daughter. She's an attorney who initially works for a local law firm, but she later works for Jacob Nighthorse to provide representation to residents on the reservation. Adam Bartley is Archie Ferguson, AKA the Ferg. He's an awkward but hardworking deputy who felt unappreciated next to his more superior deputies. Over the course of this show, you'll see how valuable he becomes. There's several other uh, recurring characters, such as uh, Ruby, the dispatcher. Zach McLaren plays Chief Matthias. He's the chief of the Cheyenne Reservation's tribal police. And A. Martinez as Jacob Nighthorse, who's a local Cheyenne businessman representing the interests of his people. And uh, there may be some other shady business going on with Nighthorse as well. And that's one of the standouts on this show. I can't quite place my finger where I've seen A. Martinez before, but he's a very good actor. You guys know, leave me a comment and let me know. Now, like I said, this story is set in Northern Wyoming, but it was filmed in several locations in New Mexico, including Santa Fe, Eagle Nest, Red River, and uh, other parts nearby. Going back to A&E, I don't understand this when networks do it. And even though Netflix picked it up, they're known for it as well. A series will be doing so well, and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they won't pick it up again for a further season. They'll just cancel it outright. Uh, I don't know the reason behind it with A&E. I am glad that Netflix picked it up and finished it out because it deserved to be seen all the way through. As with most TV shows that run for more than three years, and even some of those as well, the stories might appear sometimes to be a little bit more outlandish than they could be or should be. But this show does have a way of reeling it all in and keeping it grounded in as close to reality as possible. Going back to what I was saying about the uh, difference between the novels and the TV show, and this is secondhand for me because I've never read the novels. Walt's relationship with Vic is a lot different in the books than it is on the show. And from what I've heard, just by watching this show as I have, I think the change was for the better. It works better this way. It's hard to really describe it. I don't want to give too much of it away for those who haven't seen it. Again, for those of you who have, chime in in the comments and let me know if you agree. Now, for a couple years after that sixth and final season, there were reports back and forth about a possible next season, a possible seventh season for Longmire, which wasn't necessary because they did wrap it up. Then there were reports about maybe a uh, reunion movie or something like that. It never really materialized. And this is one of those things where they didn't really need it. They, they told the story that they had to tell and uh, everything closed out well. It really did. I am pleased that I got a chance to uh, watch all six seasons. I own all six on DVD and it is one that I will be watching again. I like these kind of things because when you watch a second or third time, you pick up on a few things that you might have missed the first time and it just deepens the story. Okay, so that's my take on Longmire, all six seasons. It's one of those shows that it rarely disappointed and it actually got a little bit better as it went along.
Tell me guys, what do you think about Longmire? Who's your favorite character on the show? Who's your least? And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. That way you never miss an episode. And please, as always, stay positive, stay blessed. I'll see you in the next video.